Welcome back to Grump's Farm for part three of sorting out these bloody feathers. Well, and everything else associated with uh, the drive on the uh, front axle. Sorry about the smoke, I've just <laughs> put the paper down. <coughs> I don't know if you saw that, but I could see it. I could hardly see the bloody camera for a second. Right, let's all look. <coughs> As you can see, now we're all rubbed down. No need to pick the lumps anymore. All rubbed right down, and that well, it doesn't look particularly smooth on the camera. It's definitely very, very smooth, very smooth indeed. Right, so now that's done, and there's no no lumps, no edges sticking up or anything. It's all pretty much in line with the chrome. Maybe just the, the teeniest bit above it, maybe a cell or so above. <coughs> Excuse me, which won't make bugger all difference to be honest. I'm now about to put in the races for the top and bottom bearings. These are a bastard because they're going at a slight angle. And it's not immediately apparent if you start trying to knock the damn thing in because it looks straight and flat. But it's not, it's slightly angled. So I'll get on and I'll just press these in. I'll probably just knock them in gently. We'll see how it goes. Because uh, pressing them will be a lot harder to do. Trying to keep a ball upright on the press will be very difficult because I don't have lots of different bits and bobs to put around it to stop it moving. Right, let's get them. Well, there we go, all in. They've been gently tapped in with a small hammer because these are such. They're so bloody hard. That hammer is going to be softer than they are. And as long as you do it gently, you can do it. As you can see, there's not a mark on there. But obviously, you don't go uh, belting it with a lump hammer. <laughs> you probably end up cracking the bloody thing. So, a smallish hammer. Gentle taps until it seeps right down in. Getting them started off is a bit of a bugger because they always go crooked. Yep, that's completely in, as is the other one. That's these fully in. Now what I can do is I'm going to have to grease up the bearings before they go on to give them a good chance of survival because you don't really want them being used dry initially. I'll be popping the bearing on the bottom pin here, the inside, pop it over that stub there, you can see sticking up, and then uh, locating the uh, ball over, over that, uh, and at the same time you've got to hold the top bearing into its race, so you can get it uh, under, whoop, over and under here, and then put the pin in the top. Now when you put the pin in the top, you're going to have to put it on with a good few shims, because that's uh, what you're going to need to adjust the amount of pressure on the swivel. That is the biggest pain in the backside with doing any swivel, is adjusting the damn things. It can take fucking ages, or sometimes it just goes right. You never really know. Like everything on a bloody Land Rover. Right, let's get on. Well, right, as you see, it's all back together. As I haven't done anything with the bottom pin, so there's nothing absolutely wrong with that at all. I've put the bolts back in. Obviously, they've all been cleaned up with the dye and everything. And I've also cleaned out all the holes in the housing with um, with the tap. To get out any vestiges of uh, thread lock. So the bottom ones have been put back in, tightened up to the proper torque, which is 
25 foot pound or is it 25 new meters? I don't know, one of those. Obviously, and dreadlocked in place. Top one's been put on with all the shims that came with it. Tightened down to the correct torque. Obviously, no thread lock or anything on there. Just do it dry. And then I've checked the pull on this with the trusty old suitcase wire. Bloody brilliant now. You're looking for a pull of between three and four kilos to get it moving, pull it round. But with all the uh, shims in there, it hasn't got anywhere near enough. It's only about one and a half kilos of pull. So what I've now got to do, take these back off. I've just undone them. And take a, a small shim, do it all back up, torque it back up, and then check the pull on it again. And that's how you go on. If you need uh, more friction, you take out a bit of shim. If you need less friction, then you put in more shim. I've also kept the old shims as well, obviously, that came from it. So in case these shims weren't enough and I needed extra, or I might even need a different size one to the ones that are on here. You never know. But this is the fun part. It just takes bloody ages. In and out, in and out, in and out. Until finally you get it right. Right, I better get on with this. I need two hands for this, because they've got to pull this out. And when I do, this is going to fall down otherwise. If I don't bloody hold on to it. Or stick my gut in the way or something. Right, let's get on. Right now to give you a clue with this about uh, how many shims and that you've got to need this teeny little thin shim here is the only one I've taken out from this goodness knows what the thickness of that is not a lot it's the thinnest shim that came in the kit anyway but taking that out means it has gone from a pull of about one and a half kilos that's what they like to deal in which is about three or four pound for those speaking in old pennies like me instead of that now as you can see it's pulling about three and a half now which i'm happy with it's now pulling about three and a half kilos which is what about eight pound something like that which is fine because uh I think remember the old ones they used to recommend about seven pound to pull on them but that moves nice and smoothly and it moves easily any which way but it has got that slight amount of preload on those bearings so yeah i'm happy with that so these have now been torqued down fully and I can now, because it's going to be a lot easier to do it now, I can now put the seal on. Because you do not want to put the seal on, on the car. When you can do it this way, where it's much bloody easier. So all I've got to do is pull these bolts out that I've left in here. Obviously these again have all been cleaned up, all the threads have been cleaned out. Everything's ready to go. Oh, and I've also quickly shut the seal in the back of there. <clears throat> it's only a light seal, so it's very easy to put in with just a rubber mallet. <clears throat> Excuse me, very carefully uh, knocking it in until it's sitting nice and flush. Right, I should get on. Get these bolts out. Now, if you take a look at this seal, you'll see there's a double lip. Yeah, between my fingers. That needs a light greasing before you put it together because that's the wiper seal. That is what seals on you all. Once you got that on, you can whack it over. And push it gently into place. 
Now, if you're wondering why, <coughs> excuse me, a bit of a cough here today. If you're wondering why I didn't check the tension with uh, that on, it's because obviously when you've got that on, it creates a lot more drag. So any results you get from pulling your swivel round will be wrong because you get a much higher drag from this seal. So therefore, you always test the uh, swivel preload without the seal in place. And when you've got it right, then you put the seal in. So there we go, that's sat on. Now I'll uh, find the cover. Now, I'm only going to put this on with one or two bolts for the minute, because I want to see if I can get the leather gaiter on now before I put it back on the car. Because that will make things a lot bloody easier. Right, this goes on this way round. And the reason I know it goes on this way round. Oh, sorry, there. there we, where's it gone? Hang on, I'm falling apart here. Oh, that should be. I've lost my cut out. <laughs> Hang on, back in a second. There we go, after a bit of fiddling about. <laughs> I'd completely forgotten where the cutout was. And the cutout is over here, which is where your lock stop comes through. No, it's not your lock stop. What am I on about? It's not where the lock stop is. Don't talk shit. The cutout is here, and there's another cutout here, because your two bolts for the caliper come through. That's what I meant to bloody say. Speaking of shit now. Yeah, this is to allow your caliper bolts to come through. There's a cut out here and there's a cut out here. To allow those room. Fucking lock stop this it's over here. Pillow. Right, now I'm going to see how to put this bloody um what's it on? Yeah, my brain's going dead today. One of those days. Put the gator on. That's what I'm going to check. See if I can get it on and do it all up like this and then put this on. We shall see. And there we go. The swivel is now back on. All seven bolts uh, tightened down. Obviously not talked up. There's no way of bloody talking them. Can't get anything on there to talk them with. So they're all tightened down nicely. And of course they're all uh, <coughs> thread locked as well. And I gave the, I'd forgotten to clean the threads out before I started, so I did that as well. Give them a good bloody clean out before I put it on. And uh, contrary to what a lot of people do, I don't use sealants for gaskets very often at all, unless the uh, manual actually called for it. So all I do is with a paper gasket, like the one between the two there, that has just got a smear of grease around both sides of it. For one, it helps to hold the bloody thing on while you're trying to do everything up. But for two, it creates a waterproof barrier. And I'm old school. It's what we've always done. And it's what I'll always do. Because I always have. It's the way people always used to do gaskets. Bit of grease. Right. Now, I've got to get on and do the new stub axe. I'll get that ready to go on. Because as far as I know, it doesn't come with the seal and the uh, needle bearer, roller bearing actually inserted in it. You have to do that yourself. So I'm going to have a look now. Back in a bit. Bloody hell, just checking through my footage. And I've just found that the whole bit I did on about the uh, leather gaiter didn't come out. Bloody camera switched off somehow. So I'll repeat what, I, what I'd said about the damn thing. Basically, if you've got a Defender, do not get part number RTC3826. Now you can see from that picture, 
it shows a series fucking swivel. Yeah, I always sold it as one to fit a defender. These bloody bits to hold it in place will not work. The holes are all in the wrong fucking places. Absolute shit. The actual gator itself, the leather is fine. And the nylon cord that goes with it, yeah, no problem at all. What I'm going to have to do is get myself another couple of retainers, the standard ones, which aren't expensive anyway, they're very cheap things. But I'll get a couple of those and I'll cut those in half so I can then fit them with the uh, swivel still on the car. It's just bloody annoying. And now, if you have a look, you see down here, everything is back in. I put the uh, original CV back in. But I checked it again, and actually, the, the play is teeny. Absolutely teeny. It's fuck all wrong with it. I had a damn good look at it. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Can't understand why it's in such good nick after all this time, but there you go. But this fucking stub axle, do not buy. These ship part fucking bearings, the needle bearings for it. Is there a part number on here? Fuck me, no, I didn't even got a part number on it. They came in a the kit. They're absolutely fucking useless. They're made of really light tin with a plastic rating side for the fucking needle to sit in, which are hide and seal. And they just bend like fuck no matter what you do. They shit. I completely destroyed one of them. Being very gentle with it as well. The second one I've got it to fit in there. It's not very good. Hardly fucking moves. But not really it has to do anyway. It's only a support. It's well greased up and fuck it. That'll do. It's a seal that's important bloody, but anyway. What a twat. Not enjoying this. Not enjoying this one fucking bit now. Ah, dear. And I've also got to take this fucking stub axle back off anyway. Because I've just realised... That there's like a brass, it looks brass, brass coloured sort of distance piece that sits on the back of it, and they don't even put those on there, so I've got to press that fucker on there before I can even think about doing this up properly. Ah. Just an annoyance. I don't know now whether I'm going to do this second fucking swivel yet. I might just test this, see how well it goes. If the car sounds good without it, I might just leave that until it's fucking ready. I'm making a bit of noise. I'm just making work for myself. I've got all the spares to redo it now anyway. Ah, oh dear. Last one off. Obviously there's no oil or one shot or anything inside this yet. Because I'm not going to put that on until it's all together. Get the mud shield off. I'll show you this fucking stupid bearing. It's in there. Piece of shit. Made of like fucking tin. Awful. And it's a tight fit in there. And I was pressing in very, very carefully. I tried pressing it in with gentle taps. I tried pressing it in with the press very carefully. Ah. Don't buy, as I say, don't buy the fucking Brit part ones. They are shit. 
Okay, there's plenty of grease and crap on that, so it will spin in there, no problem anyway. Not a tight fit particularly. Ah, right. I've got to get the back fucking piece for this, which should be in this box. No, not that box, that box. I can't fucking find it now. Oh, there it is. That bit there. And it's got cutouts in it. When my thumb is there, there's cutouts all around it. They have to stick up this side. So I'm going to fit that and then put the fucking thing back on again. There we go. That's just, just taps on with a mallet. Nice easy fit, thanks, bud. Right, now that's on there, we we'll put the bloody thing back on again. Here we go. Well, I owe you folks an apology. I've put it all together now. I didn't film the rest of it. This completely went out of my mind. I had a few little problems with that to sort out. I thought, oh, I'll get this and start filming in a second. Didn't happen. Oh well, it's done. I'm not going to do the other side for now because the other side's not even leaking. Unless I get some vibration when I take this out for a test run in a minute, then I'll leave it. If I do get vibration, then I will do the other side. If not, I, if, uh, you know what I mean? Not my day today. Uh, <laughs> if I uh, do do the other one, yeah, obviously I'll film it and whatever, yeah, if, if people want to see it, but it'll be exactly the same as I've already done anyway. But we shall see. Right, that's it for now anyway. I'm going to say I'm going to take this out for a test run, see what happens. See if it's all sorted. Hopefully it will bloody be. Once it is, got a few jobs to do in the house before I can then get on and get the old girl back in here. Because I say she's missing like buggery and needs sorting out. Probably have to try and uh, check the injectors. Might have to pull one out and give it a quick blow off. Hopefully that's what the problem is. Or it might just be a disconnection from I don't know. We shall find out. I've got welding and stuff to do on there and all sorts. Yeah, that's enough to keep me busy for a while. Alright, and take care, people. I'll see you again soon. Bye.